So I'm sure that you heard about pixel shift technology and how using your XH2 or XT5, you can create 160 megapixel pictures. However, I haven't found any videos out there that clearly explain how the technology works. So if you're curious like me and you want to know how pixel shift technology works, then let's get started. So contrary to what you may think, uh, the camera sensor is not made of pixel, it's actually made of photosite. And each photosite is either sensitive to red, green or blue. RGB, you may have heard about it. And from the R, G and B colors, you can pretty much make any other colors out there. Now, the layout of those photosites can be different, whether you are on a Bayer sensor or on the x trend sensor like in the Fujifilm camera. Now, a pixel is something a bit different because you can only talk about pixel when you're talking about something digital. Let's say an image that is recorded on your computer. And contrary to a photosite, which is sensitive to only one color, a pixel already contains R, G and B information. So now you may ask, okay, how do you go from photosites with one color information to pixels, right? Company uses the process of interpolation where they will use the information contained surrounding photosite and then with this, create a pixel. All right, so now that you understand what is a photosite and what is a pixel, let's talk about pixel shift technology. So first, pixel shift technology should actually be called photosite shift, but I guess that's less sexy. The way pixel shift technology works is that supposing that your camera and the subject that you're trying to shoot are not moving, using the IV system of your camera, meaning the in-body image stabilization, your sensor will shift by one photosite on either the left, right, up or down direction. By doing so several times, you will be able to have true color information in each of your photosite, meaning red, green and blue information on each of them. And thus you will not need interpolation anymore to deduct the missing colors. Now, the second application of the pixel shift technology is to basically miniaturize the pixels within your sensors and effectively quadruple the amount of information, effectively quadrupling the resolution of your sensor. And because you cannot move either your camera or your subject while you're capturing all the shots that necessary for the pixel shift, I would say that pixel shift is mainly suited for either product photography, food photography, and maybe some cases of landscape photography where you are sure that there is nothing moving in your frame. All right, so now I explain on a higher level how pixel shift will work, right? But let's try to dive a little bit deeper into how it works and how it actually happens uh, in terms of pixels and photosites. All right, so if we first have a look at our x trans pattern, this is the minimum pattern that I talked to you about that you can replicate to have the full sensor layout. And you can see that this x trans pattern is visible here, right? Obviously, there are way more photo sites than this on a sensor, but for this explanation, I just limit it to this. Now let's move to our first process, which is to recover true color in each of our pixels. If we take a first shot, the R, G and B information that are contained in, it, in our picture are pretty much the same as our pattern, right? So to facilitate the explanation, I basically separated the R, G and B information on the diagram. So if you have a shot for your particular pattern, here you will have the red information, here you will have the green information, and here you will have the blue information. Now let's go back to this particular layout, right? If we want to shift our sensor by one pixel, whatever we want to capture in our composition will not be captured on this particular pattern, but will be captured here, right? So effectively right now we shifted the sensor by one pixel to the left. So this is what you see. And now for the same element of your composition, effectively you capture different colors, right? So before you were capturing red here, true red, now you're capturing true blue here. And I'm going to the same to do the same process, right? Before there was red only here, right? But now I also have red here. So I'm basically gonna take this and add the red information that I get in my second pictures and add it to the diagram. I'm gonna do it the same for the red, for the green and the blue. And what, is, what you can see is that you have more red, more green and more blue information that are captured. Now I'm going to put back the sensor at its initial position and I'm going to shift it 
to the opposite direction. And by doing so, so right now I'm saying that I'm doing it, but effectively it's the in-body image stabilization that's doing that. And we are going to capture another image. So as you can see, this corresponds to what you see here. And hop, you do the same, you not the red. See here we're missing red, but now you have red here, so you not the red. Here there was missing green, but here you have green. And you do the same for the blue also. And you can see that after three shots, we have true information for the green color all over our pattern, which is also true for all our sensor. But we are still missing some blue and some red. All right, so now we're going to do the same. We're going to shift our sensor down. We're going to complete the missing red information. So as you can see, this was missing, but now it's present here. So it becomes red. This was missing, but it's present here. So this becomes red and you do the same for the blue, right? So the blue, this was missing, but here you have blue information. So it comes here and we do the same for each square. Then we're going to put back our sensor to it, its initial position and shift up, right? And we're going to repeat the process. And what you can see is that after taking five shots, we have true information for the red, the green and the blue, if we are able to combine each and every single shot. So by taking five shots and combining them with each other, we effectively have true color information in our image. All right, so now we're going to talk about the process of miniaturizing the pixels, right? So if we consider one pixel with true red, green and blue information, meaning that we went through those five shots process before that I just explained, right? The way we want to miniaturize the process um, in the pixel, sorry, is that we want to have as much information as one quarter of a pixel that we have into one pixel with true red, green and blue information, right? So if we take a series of five shots, we get one of those pixels that, that I basically uh, represent with a purple square, right? Now, if we take this square right here, which is a quarter of a pixel, in a quarter of a pixel, you will effectively have a quarter of a full pixel information, right? So we have three quarter left for us to be able to say that in this amount, in this area, we have as much information as in a pixel, right? So how do we do that? We are going to shift our sensor by half of a pixel. Right here, we shifted our sensor by half of a pixel and we are going to do the five shot process. Once we are done with this, we will get another quarter of information in this area, right? So we get another quarter of information. Then we go back to the initial area. We're going again to shift our sensor by half of a pixel and we get another quarter of information, right? We come back and then we shift it on the other side And effectively, in a quarter of a pixel, so because the sensor moved by half of a pixel, in this particular area, we got as much as information as in one pixel. And this is how you get basically 20 shots because you need to have this process completed four times, shifted by half a pixel every time to be able to have the pixel miniaturization. So this is how pixel shift works effectively. Now you may ask yourself how to combine all those pictures that are created to actually generate that 160 megapixel file. Well, Fujifilm released a software to do that, which is the Fujifilm Pixel Combiner, and that will do that automatically for you. It will basically take the information of each image and combine them into a huge file with true color and improved resolution and generate a DNG file from all of the raw files that you gave it. All right, so let me know if you have any questions in the comment. I think that's a really difficult topic to tackle and to understand, but I really wanted to make a video about it because I did not see any videos out there that tried to explain that process. I hope that you learned something and that this video was helpful to you. And if it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you've missed it, check out this video right here where I go into more details about the Fujifilm stack sensors that they released for the X-H2S. I'll see you right there.